quality number three, what do you mean when you say divine truth and love are always in perfect harmony mm. and without truth, love cannot be complete? Mm. And you could also say without love, truth cannot be complete yeah. as well. But uh, this is something about, about lo uh, love and truth that we need to understand is that truth supports love. It doesn't pull apart love. It doesn't degrade love. It actually improves it. Yeah. And, and if we have love, it will always, if we look at things from a point of view of love, we will always discover more divine truth, more of God's truth. Because every one of God's truths have inbuilt in them perfect love. Perfected love mm. is, it exists within every one of God's truths. So if we look at the truths about gravity, there, are lo there is love in that truth yeah. about gravity. Mm -hmm. And there's all sorts of reasons for that gravity to exist that, that actually cause the harmonious operation of our own life and the existence of all sorts of organisms that are in the gravitational field. Mm -hmm. It actually allows love to exist. And this is a beautiful thing about God's truth, divine truth is that it, it always is in harmony, in perfect harmony with love. So every single thing that we ever discover, physically, emotionally, spiritually, soul-based, all of these laws that exist, and there's a hierarchy of them as well, all of these laws that exist, which are all truths, exist in a framework of love. Yeah. And in fact, if... There is a, a postulation by a person on earth, an idea or a concept of a person on earth, that there is a law that's out of harmony with love. You can pretty much immediately dismiss it as a possibility mm. because all of God's universal laws, all of God's universal truths are completely in harmony with love itself. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such an important thing to understand, how this relationship between love and truth. And love from God cannot actually flow unless truth is present in that instant. Yes. If we look at the growth of the human soul, mm -hmm. which is a, one of, of, you know, what I feel is of primary concern, you know, how the human soul functions. The reality is that we cannot grow towards the infinite without receiving divine love. However, divine love being received is going to depend on our willingness to accept the truth about how it's received. Yes. Now, most people don't believe that. Mm -hmm. Most people believe that love can be given without understanding anything else. And that's not true, actually. True, pure love is dependent upon the openness to receiving truth. Mm -hmm. Universal, God's truth. It's the, this openness to receiving truth that will help us understand and actually help us absorb love. And if we wish to reject the truth that the love is exposing, then we will not receive more love. Mm. It's impossible to receive more love unless we accept the truth that the love that we've already received has exposed. And, uh, and this is why I feel most people have a short period of time where they receive divine love. And then they stop because they're unwilling to be humble to the fact that they have not yet absorbed the truth mm. that the love is telling them they need to accept. Right? So if I can, maybe we can give some examples in the question that, the that follows. Question, yeah. But it's important to understand that this is a quality of divine truth, that there is this direct association mm. between God's love and God's truth. One can't be had without accepting some of the other. Yeah. And so it's very Which is important. It's very powerful. If and you, powerful if you to say know. say that again, like you can't receive God's truth unless you're open to God's love. Exactly. And you can't receive God's love unless you're open to God's truth. Exactly. And the two are in harmony with each other always. It, always. Yeah. So if we look at the first scenario where we can't receive God's love unless we're open to truth, if, you, if you're not open to the truth, that God exists, if you're not even potentially open to that truth, in other words, you're not, you're not at least saying perhaps God exists, yeah. you will never ask for love from mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. That's reality. 
you will never receive it as a result. And so you will never grow as a result. Yeah. Now, let's say you are open to the potential of that as a truth mm -hmm. and you decide to ask for God's love, and so you do, and you receive some. Now, along with that love will come some truths packeted with it mm. that you have the choice to receive or not. Right? Now, if you choose to not receive it, you will block yourself to receiving further love. Yeah. So you'll be asking God to receive love and God's going, no, no, no. You, don't, you haven't accepted the truth about the love I've already given you. Like The love I've already given you tells you that you need to love your brother and your sister the same. And yet you don't. You, 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 know, you love women more than you love men. Mm -hmm. So that's out of harmony with the love I've given you already. You, know, you need to address that truth and then you, you may receive some more love. And God's always trying to indicate to us where these issues are because the law of attraction... And these laws of cause and effect, they are laws that have been created by God to expose to you where you have not received the truth. So there are truths about those laws, because remember, every law is just a truth about how, what we attract. In the case of the law of attraction, or what we cause, in the case of the law of cause and effect, mm -hmm. what are the causes, every single one of those laws are truths. And if you don't accept them, then you're going to stagnate in your ability to receive more love, which will expose more truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like a growing process, and it, I sort of liken it to going to school in some ways. Yeah. You can't grab a child who's five years old, who's never been to school and never been educated at all in, by its parents, and place it in university and expect it to understand anything. It may not even understand the language that's being used, even though it's the same <laughs> language it's grown up with in the first five years yeah. because of the different acronyms and other things that may be associated with the university degree. So what it has to do is go through a, a process of growth where it receives some truth, it understands more things, it receives some more truth. It uses the truth that it's used as a foundation and it receives more and the foundation becomes larger and then a construction basically happens inside the individual where they're capable of receiving more. Mm. That's how God is working with us every single time. There's certain truths that we will not be able to ever accept unless we accept truths prior to it. Yeah. And there's a certain amount of love that we will not be able to ever accept unless we act in harmony with the truth prior to it. Mm. And so this is something we must need to understand, this harmonious balance between love and truth. Yeah, yeah, very beautiful. And, and it gives us, a, understanding this truth gives us a lot of um, things to work with, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, I'm not receiving love. Well, love's in harmony with truth. What's the truth I'm ignoring here? Exactly, Yeah. exactly. Yeah. But also it helps us go, okay, let's look at these universal things I'm trying to discover. Yeah. Whenever it's out of harmony with love, and if I can detect any disharmony with love in what is happening, yeah. then I know that my concept of what the truth is about the subject probably has to change. Yeah. Because, it's a, because it, the, love is, the lack of love is telling me that there's probably also a lack of divine truth because mm -hmm. divine truth and love is perfect harmony yeah. every time. So, so if I look at a theory that's presented to me, let's say it's a religious theory such as God only loves the people who believe in Christianity. Mm -hmm. That's a religious theory that one and a half billion people on the planet believe. And of course, God only loves the people who believe in the Koran. There's another million, billion or so people believe in that. Yeah. And in fact, if you think about it, those two beliefs are completely opposite each other, <laughs> really, in, yeah. in, in, in terms of their understanding. Yet both faiths have the same belief about their own faith. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at it from love's perspective. Does it make sense that God would only love a group of people who believe in a man-made written book of a certain type? It does not make any sense mm. from a perspective of love. It would make more sense that God would love any person who's willing to love. Yeah. And if God truly loves, it would make more sense that God loves any person, no matter what they're willing to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would make the most, yeah. uh, that would be the most harmonious with love. So therefore, it's highly likely that it's also the truth yeah. because it's the most harmonious with love. 
And so what we can do is we can analyse teachings of the world and we can list them all and we can, we can go through, is this harmony with, in harmony with love? Is this in harmony with love? Or is this out of harmony with love? My understanding of what love is. And we can just dismiss teaching after teaching after teaching. Bible verse after Bible verse, mm -hmm. Koran verse after Koran verse, yeah. and other holy book verses after holy book verses. We can just dismiss immediately by asking that one question. Yeah. Is this in harmony with what I know love to be at this point in time? Yeah, and it'll be great because you and I are going to have a discussion on the qualities of divine love as well, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And so really when you've got these two um, discussions side by side, you mm -hmm. get to see, well, uh, from what I understand from that discussion about what divine truth is and what I understand about divine love, you've got a great sort of... Um, way of weighing up all kinds of different theories and ideas. And honestly, it's simple. Mm -hmm. It is so simple to determine what is the truth when you understand these qualities properly. Yeah. Yeah. You understand, and this is, this is why in the first century I found it so simple to discover truth. Mm -hmm. Even though I was indoctrinated by my father and others in the way of the Torah, the, you know, the, the, the first five books of the Bible in particular, but also of the prophets, even though I was indoctrinated in those faiths, I didn't believe in them because all I knew was that here we go, this is out of harmony with love. You know, my mother had to go away for 40 days every time she had a child. That seemed to me to be out of harmony with love, you know. Every time she had a menstrual period, she had to go away for seven days and nobody could touch her. That was out of harmony with love and, and so forth and so forth. There were so many things out of harmony with love. And, and, and okay, they can't be the truth then. Mm -hmm. Quite simple. They mm -hmm. can't be the truth because I know... Got from God's perspective, and by that stage I was about 18 years of age and I could see very clearly that from God's perspective, everything would have had to be in harmony with love. Yeah. And in harmony with the love that far exceeds any person's love on earth. Mm. And so when we understand this quality, there are so many things we can, we can understand and work through in terms of what is truth and what is not. Mm. Great. Okay.